Let's step back and examine some cycles of the sun. Some are very short, others are quite long. We have already seen the two to three minute pulses and learned that there are other three to five minute oscillations involved at the sunspot level. Let's look at the star as a whole. How long does it take for the sun to rotate one time? This is a difficult question because the sun does not rotate the same speed at different latitudes. The equator rotates about 10 days faster than the polar regions, with the majority of the sun having an average of about 28 days, 4 weeks, coincidentally the same as one lunar cycle for Earth's moon around our planet. The most commonly discussed cycle of the sun is the sunspot cycle. NASA's official sunspot numbers show an approximately 11 year cycle of high and low sunspot activity. The high activity periods are called sunspot maximum, or just solar maximum, while the periods of low sunspot activity are called sunspot minimum, or just solar minimum. During the minimum, there are few sunspots, and therefore generally fewer solar flares. The amount of light the sun gives off weakens slightly, and the coronal holes are mostly confined to the polar regions. Contrast this with sunspot maximum, where sunspots and coronal holes pepper the lower latitudes. The 11 year cycle is seen in terms of maximum and minimum sunspot activity, but there's a matching, simultaneously occurring cycle that follows an opposite pattern. Let's start by looking at the last few sunspot maximums, occurring around 2013, back in 2002, 1991, and 1980. Now let's look at another chart. Stanford's Wilcox Solar Observatory measures the strength of the solar polar fields, the magnetic force of the north and south poles of the sun, with their average running between them. You will notice that the aforementioned sunspot maximums are noted here, and they correspond with polar minimum. Likewise, the bulges here representing maximum polar force occur during sunspot minimum. Perhaps the solar cycle should be considered more as a function of polar fields than sunspots. During sunspot minimum, when the coronal holes are confined to the polar regions, the force is more aligned north and south through the poles, but the sun actually reverses its magnetic poles every 11 years. When this happens, the forces are no longer polar aligned, but they work their way angrily towards the equator and then to the opposite pole. While the magnetic fields are working their flip, they can form sunspots at lower and lower latitudes, lower and lower until as mentioned in a previous episode, the positive and negative sunspots reverse which side of the solar equator they will leave the sunspot groups. Lastly, a point of uncertainty and often controversy, the grand cycles of the sun. This is another sunspot chart from NASA It essentially shows the current grand solar sunspot cycle from the last grand minimum named for the Maunder husband and wife science team which began after a marked weakening that occurred in the early 1600s up to what is commonly regarded as the modern grand solar maximum during the second half of the 1900s. Looking back thousands of years, the grand maximums aren't always grand and the minimums don't always go very low, but suggestions on a range somewhat variable go from just under 400 years to about 600 years per grand cycle, with a lot of variation in between. These grand cycles are an important focus for the future of solar physics, especially because we need to understand the effects of a grand minimum, with the next one at most 250 years away, and possibly much, much sooner. <laughs>